Hello everybody, welcome to our energy update for energetically sensitive and empaths for October the 20th until the 26th. Uh, this is uh, Yona Brindis uh, from Transcodes and as always um, I'm welcoming you from wherever in the world you're watching from. Uh, this is the live recording. All right, I think we need to talk about last week. <laughs> uh, not sure about you, but uh, there has been a lot of stuff going down these last two weeks, but especially last week. Last week was a very humbling week for a lot of us and uh, in very surprising ways. So um, I reckon that um, many of you, just like, you know, this uh, self-healing community here that's around me in, in uh, a trans cult, went through a lot of shifts and changes in your life. Um, maybe some things in your relationship, most likely actually, because uh, a lot of the energies, the collective energies that we have been dealing with in the last uh, couple of weeks were really steering towards seeing the truth of our relationships. And with that, of course, also um, needing to let go of some of uh, the illusions, uh, maybe, and the expectations, perhaps, or some of the things that um, we interpreted into our partners or into our jobs or into our family relationships. Uh, without noticing how much this was actually um, distorted um, by our expectations and uh, what many of you, and we talked about this last week, uh, have come to discover. Um, many of you are your unconscious inner child to karmic family uh, things that um, played out this week. And it was very humbling in that way. But let me give you a, a brief overview, a brief uh, summary here of what uh, to expect this next week. And then we're going to return to a review and what uh, all these things mean and how our um, pain of the past wasn't in vain. All right. How we can use this, how we can put this into action. So uh, week 43 um, here, the, the last week or the... the, the mm, week that is uh, uh, starting here uh, in, in the last days of October um, is going to bring a really cool shift. So there's actually a really cool backwind now with uh, putting things into action and changing some of the things, some of the ways we, we've we looked at our life, we've looked at others. However, and this is a big however, because this is only like the beginning really of a whole new era. And uh, many of you have um, heard me or actually read me uh, say this at the end of last week, that 2017 is going to be a game changer in regards to the integration of our energetic sensitivity. All right, I've been announcing this for years, but 2017 now is really asking us to step into the reality of our energetic integrity and I'm going to explain here in a little bit what I mean with this but please understand that no matter how tough it was until here throughout this entire year this was not for nothing okay this is what we all came here for all right we are just now beginning to internalize what all this means and so uh, when it comes to the energies of next week and how to deal with them, because a big part of this energy update is, is tips from me as an energy coach, you know, how to better deal with this. But when it comes to, uh, to dealing with this, we've got to understand that it's not that we didn't know these things before. It's just that we're starting to really feel them now. And the, f from an energy coaching standpoint, it's the difference between just sort of mentally or conceptually understanding something and really, be, you know, when and, and the moment when it begins to sink in like, oh, OK, you know, you've been um, studying a lot. You've, you, you guys all have a wonderful dedication with your consciousness development and all that is concerned and you understand a lot. A lot of you have phenomenal metaphysical understanding, no matter sort of what 
kind of direction, you know, whether it's religion or new age or wherever you came from, you know, NLP or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You guys all have a really good understanding of things. But uh, there is a distinct difference in our energetic power of making things happening, of, of or making things happen, of, of manifesting things, when we begin to internalize the meaning of it, when we begin to realize that all this is inside of us. Okay, so what am I talking about? Okay, some of the, the humbling uh, experiences last week, um, besides, of course, uh, always uh, the swings for, for us energetically sensitives that I always swings with is the physical uh, kind of aspect of dealing with what a lot of people call ascension symptoms. You know, it's like the thing last week again, you know, this pain in the neck um, at the base of our skull, you know, which uh, usually indicates that we are um, uh, on the brink of 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 decoupling from like a collective implant from a co collectively programmed energy okay so how do i know this how can i uh, uh, uh what examples can i make uh, it's the stuff that's going through the news everything that's going through the news is sort of the collective manifestation of of the the processes going on inside of us it's the the um, somebody just said this in a, in a coaching session here to me, the macro and the micro, you know, like the micro is the stuff that goes on within ourselves, but collective energies are always a mirror of what is going on within ourselves on the outside and vice versa. I want to point out again here that the, the question of causality, what caused what, is irrelevant. Okay, that's secondary. It doesn't matter whether it was the chicken or the egg that was there first. Okay, in energy work, we look at the phenomenon, we look at the empiricism of it and um, how we perceive it and uh, the subjectivity, of course, you know, what does this do in me? What does uh, all this uh, condition, what does that cause in me? Does it cause resistance in me? Do I fight against it? Do I try to convince? Do I try to deflect? Do I... Do, am I denying, you know, am I going against it or am I going with it? This is all we're looking at in energy work. Is This determines the way our reality sort of plays out for us. And, you know, those of you who work with me, they know that I differentiate between um, three different kinds of reality. One is uh, the, the physical reality, which is the one how... Uh, that determines how things play out, you know, like the things that are actually happening. This is what I do when I look at the last week's energy, when I look at the review, okay? This is the energetic reality. It's the feedback, all right? Then there's the ego reality, which is, you know, all the hopes and dreams and how we see things, okay? How we want to see things. And then there's the energetic reality, and that is the one here in energy coaching that we are talking about that we are trying to get into congruence with our physical reality. In other words, uh, the majority of the work here, at least, you know, from what you will hear me talking, is about taking down um, the ego reality. And ego reality is an oxymoron in itself. It's actually a deception. It's a deception, but it's not a deception in sort of in a, in a demonized way coming from the outside, you know, um, uh, it can be sometimes, but that's actually the case in the minority um, uh, of the cases. The, the majority is really a distortion that happens within our own perception, meaning that there are things that we just simply cannot see until we see them. And this was the theme of last week and has, and, and this will bring a lot of consequences to, to those of you who are conscious about this. Because when you begin to see that there are things beyond your mind, so meaning even though you understand them, all right, are still determining the way you see the world yourself or others, then we're talking about a distortion. 
And every time I talk about distortion or deception, as I called it two weeks ago, we're talking about, or I'm talking about, the reality of your ego, the distorted reality of your ego. And I think you know where this is going. It's going. It's all about truth. All right. So how can I make myself see more truth? Well, I have to be in truth in order to be able to see truth. And on the collective level, this is what we're observing right now. So there's a lot of things that are coming forward. Uh, just uh, to mention one thing that really struck me last week, uh, it was the, the Hollywood thing, the, the Me Too thing, the sexual harassment <clears throat> aspect that is uh, coming forward now in, in, in many different uh, businesses and so forth. And <clears throat> the energetic reality of it is uh, that this is uh, just a tiny example of where our reality has been living in an ego reality. We have not been able to see this before. One uh, journalist, I forgot which article it was, asked, why has Hollywood kept quiet about uh, this uh, going on there? Uh, the, the sexual uh, uh, harassment or whatever, uh, you know, like the pressure that uh, some actors and actresses, not just actresses, were put under, uh, you know, in order to be able to make career, in order to be able to break through you know, um, uh, you know, uh, with uh, their abilities and and uh, the blackmailing and all that is going on. Why has Hollywood kept um, this quiet? I can tell you why. Hollywood hasn't kept it quiet. We have all been keeping it quiet because it's normal. Because we've accepted that as part of our reality. Every woman that is halfway decent looking, halfway intelligent, knows that this is the truth. There has not been a single occasion in my life, uh, especially in my younger life, where uh, this hasn't played a role. And it is, uh, thank you for your, for your guys' uh, uh, upbeat words here. Uh, I'm not saying this to make anybody feel guilty or to victimize myself because I'm getting there now, uh, you know, like the, the, the ramifications. What does all that mean, accepting truth? Uh, the whole point is, is that we have accepted dysfunctionality, um, power games, emotional manipulation, and this, this big old sort of matrix delusion as our reality. And that's why we can't see it okay so nobody has kept quiet about it we've just accepted that as reality so in other words the 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 way we perceive things has a lot to do with our alignment to truth and with our consciousness about it you cannot see things if you are accepting them as reality and this is exactly what the pain of the last week was all about Many of us, as I uh, uh, announced and predicted, uh, found themselves in places of injustice, in places of um, rejection, abandonment, um, disappointment, you know, and oh my God, and how could this have come so far? I can tell you why or how this had, could have come so far, because you've accepted it as your reality. And this was the painful part of last week's, uh, you know, the last several weeks, um, sort of clearing phase, correction phase, seeing truth. And the pain is your ego kicking and screaming, not wanting to accept things the way they are. So if you are courageous enough to actually make your energetic reality your physical reality, then you have the courage to accept things the way they are. And what does that mean? Now we're getting into next week, you know, into the ramifications of that. It means that we have to stop resisting things as they come in and display themselves. We don't need to prove that we were victims. We don't need to blame. We don't need to point fingers. We don't need to convince others. We need to work on what the reality of that actually means in terms of 
how can we approach things differently from here on with this knowledge the <clears throat> The Hollywood uh, scandal, okay, is just a tiny, tiny, the tiny little tip of the iceberg of injustice and power-driven um, <clears throat> um, modes of operation that are dominating our worlds, our societies, guys. It's showing the sickness of our society. Okay, and I'm not saying this because I'm a woman. I'm saying this as an energy worker because it shows me how people can get so locked in to their third chakra power um, and control that they're unable to see, you know, how dysfunction, how dysfunctional that is. And so dysfunctionality is a matter of your energetic perception. Obviously, there are some clearly dysfunctional things, you know, like say, you know, I don't want to polarize you guys, but like say, uh, you know, child abuse or something. And most people agree on that, that this is dysfunctional. But where does it start and where does it end? Yes, pedophilia in the Catholic Church is the same, very good example because uh, this has been around for, I don't know, a thousand years maybe even longer and there's there's a reason why uh, uh, pedophilia in 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 some circles is accepted because it's accepted as the lesser of the evil but it has created conditions for a whole entire strand of dysfunctional behaviors and they have replicated into our society into our personal lives and that's what truth does it grounds all that and it shows you know the sickness of it i'm not going against you know um, uh, you know i'm not a rebel or anything you know i'm just showing you the problem within you and that is that if we grow up in dysfunctional or distorted uh conditions we are unable to see truth because it offsets our perception of normal and our perception of truth for ourselves. Someone who grows up in a, like say, verbally abusive household as a child does not know the boundary between, you know, uh, healthy communication and unhealthy communication. You cannot see this. Now, does this make you a bad person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It makes you a person who is maybe in denial or has a distorted way of perceiving things, but it doesn't make you a bad person. Maybe in the expression of, of some of the things, uh, uh, you know, of like how you want to express yourself, the ways you approach things. And this is, you know, what we're going to be dealing with this week. So, you know, I'm closing in, you know, the arc now a little bit because this is actually a wonderful shift. Being able to see the distortion of the past allows us to move into a place of truth with ourselves, into a place of accountability. And we just had a discussion here about the word responsibility, self-responsibility. And, um, you know, you may have not uh, or you may not be fully aware of this, but responsibility triggers the fear of punishment in us. It triggers something like, uh, oh, my God, I made a mistake. It triggers guilt and even shame in us. So, uh, you know, like all the metaphysical teachers in the world can talk about self-responsibility as long as they want to. Um, uh, we, it's not going to hit, uh, you know, like sort of that, that place in us that actually makes us change anything until we realize that self-responsibility has nothing to do with blaming, with power, with mistakes, with being, you know, uh, bad. And with all this judgment that has been infused into our ways of thinking and infused into to our belief systems and values from childhood on. And so when I talk about inner child and karmic family, I'm talking about the deepest core programming that you all have, which is a product of our collective programming. All right. And this is what was being cracked open this last week. And it allows you now to reframe all these things and begin 
a new way to approach some of the things you know in your life maybe uh, how you approach your job how you approach your relationship how you re approach parenting now is this going to be done overnight absolutely not so we're in a corrective phase which means that things need to be corrected and that means it will take just as long for most of us actually if, uh, uh, how long it took to build this so we're going to have to cut ourselves some slack here and understand that you know now that we're beginning to actually really be able to make the connection and see all these things it doesn't resolve anything yet it just makes it possible for us to see truth it's only the beginning now we actually have a chance now we're talking now we can approach our life in the understanding that a lot of the way we've been seeing the world before was distorted. And beating ourselves up over it uh, is, is futile, really, because you weren't able to see this before. You can't make yourself responsible for what you couldn't see before. Yes, of course, it's a form of ignorance. It's the ignorance of the past. But there is an innocence in the ignorance of the past. And that's the healing resonance for the next week. That's what we need to connect with. We need to connect with understanding that we couldn't have seen this before. But now that we can, it's our responsibility to put this into action. So it's still a bit tricky, but a wonderful energy to work with because we are actually now becoming more and more able to see truth for what it is. And if you if you were asking me as an energy coach, what what is the, the single most important trait or single one of uh, most important ability that we need to have, I can boil it down to one single one. And that is the ability to see truth and the courage to follow through on it. And that courage is going to be heavily rewarded in the future. Every one of us who's able to put truth into action and to live according to truth, to live and manifest their lives according to their inner truth, is going to be successful. And everything that is based on distortion of the ego is going to fall apart. Now, is this going to happen next week? No but more and more and more. It's going to happen in the future, meaning probably like a 20-year circle that we're looking at. Where untruth, where the falsehood, you know, of, of, of this ego deception is being demontaged bit by bit, which means that all industries, all political systems, all religions, everything that was based on power, control, manipulation, you know, uh, you name it, that has not uh, sort of the highest good for all in mind, liberty, sovereignty, freedom, will fall apart. So ask yourself, where do you want to stand? Do you want to stand on the side of people who want to hold up the old system that is already dying, that is already falling apart, and, and pushing out, you know, the last sort of uh, energy resource that you have into trying to keep the illusion alive? Or do you want to be on the other side of people who are actually starting to build something new? Who want to actually live in a world that is based on truth. Does truth mean that we all just going to be holding hands and singing Kumbaya together? No. Absolutely not. You know, being able to see truth doesn't make you a better person. But for the first time, it makes you able or puts you into a place where you can actually make a choice. Do you really think you have a choice when you are in denial, deflection, and distortion? You don't. That's why it's useless to beat yourself up over your innocence of the past because you couldn't see it better. But once you do, there is no turning around. 
every time you choose against truth now, you're going to feel it in your body. It's going to hurt you. Make, make you sick even. Because of all the work that you have done in the past, working on truth, working on your perception, working on really becoming congruent within, you now have no other choice than moving forward because this is already going on within you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have felt you know the, the the humbling grounding or the the you know the pain in these past weeks the pain in these past weeks was your energy system your energy being totally waking up to when you are incongruent every resistance in your life every drama in your life is based on you resisting truth and when i say truth i want to to emphasize this here, I'm not talking about subjective truth. There is a subjective truth that we all have based on our consciousness, consciousness level. But then there is a truth that is universal. And that truth has something to do with the resonance of a person and not so much with their opinions or their beliefs. It has something to do with are they true to themselves? Is there congruence in that person? And this is basically your navigation tool for your future. And if you're not using that, if you're not being congruent, if you're not putting this into action, you're going to feel this in your body, in your relationships, in your financial situation, in your family life. Because it, we are now at a, at a breaking point here in our human evolution where truth becomes or is starting to become the prime directive. It may still take another hundred or thousand years until, you know, all systems on this planet, you know, man-made systems, um, have fully transformed into this. But because you are energetically sensitive, you are already feeling all this. So y your problem in the past has been that you felt incompatible with the rest of the society. And you were. But this is changing now. Is it going to be easy? No. You're still going to feel this incompatibility. You're still going to feel that other people are in a total delusion sometimes. And you're going to feel when other people deny things, when they deflect things, when they manipulate, when they try to control, when they infringe, when they meddle, when they try to convince. You're going to feel all that. Question now is, what are you going to choose? Because you have the choice now. You can go into being in accountable for your own part in this and for your own part of the consequences and I'm, I'm not talking consequences as in punishment i mean consequences as in you know the energetic consequences of of how this is going to duplicate into um all levels of, of of your life's manifestation you are now at this place that you always wanted to arrive at and that is you can manifest whatever it is that you want, and you will. But you better be careful f for what you wish for because you cannot really deny truth anymore, which means you're going to feel when you are incongruent and you're going to see it right away because your manifestation speed is so much faster now than it used to be that things are going to go lopsided right away. So my big energy tip for, for next week and, of course, the rest of your life, really. <laughs> but next week, you're going to see this, like, bam, right in your face. is congruence. Go inside of you and ask yourself, what is my thought pattern here or my emotional pattern or, or where I want to go right now or the choice that I'm about to make? What is that based on? Is that based on truth? How I truly feel? What I truly want? how I truly want it? Or is it based on trying to maintain a picture of myself or some kind of representation of what I think or how I think things need to be or how I need to be for that matter? Is it true? Or is it ego? 
that's the question that you can ask yourself next week in, in all of your guys' uh, uh, you know, life situations. And those of you, you know, who think that, you know, isolation is a, is a good way out, you know, uh, you know, I have shocking news for you. You know, no matter how much you cave in, no matter, you know, how much you resist relationships or collaboration with others, you're going to be forced to understand that you are not, you're not alone here. You, you're just not. That's a distortion in itself to think that you could separate yourself or isolate yourself out of the collective is an ego distortion. You are part of this, okay? And you can see all your challenges in your life in conjunction with, you know, interacting with other people as training situations, as sparring situations where you actually have the chance to practice. Or you can stay there and blame everything onto the system or onto, you know, politicians or your parents or whomever you want to blame it on. But that means that you actually choosing falsehood over the truth in you because there is no way you can hold this up in the future anymore. So what do we all need here as a long term projection sort of 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 working on solutions we need to move into collaboration we need to move into harmony with our environment okay except that nine out of ten people are going to be incompatible with you for the next 10 20 years yes but there's going to be this one person who gets it and who sees the world like you do and you know in 10 years from now there will be two out of eight of, out of 10 people that will be able to do this we've already reached that point you know, in our evolution where it's okay to be in truth. This is the cool news here. It doesn't mean that it's easy because the system is lagging behind, okay? The denser the level, the longer it takes. But we are already a community, guys. We just live so far apart that we don't think the others exist, but we do. That's why I keep on emphasizing since, I don't know, since March or whatever, you know, communities, collaboration, self-sustainability, self-responsibility. Those are cool things, but you can't do this on your own. As long as you separate yourself from others, you are separating yourself from God, if you will, from your own higher power. It's just that, you know, here in energy work, we're not talking about an outer higher power. We're talking about an inner higher power. So the, the whole process of aligning yourself to truth is to become able to see that, that this power is within you. And how does this power get replicated? How does this power expand, expansion, you know, sort of as the, 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 the universal sort of divine field? It expands in collaboration. It expands through synergy. So working together, accepting that you're no special than others. You're not, sorry. You know, your mom told you you were special. Well, you know, that's created a big inner child aspect in you, you know, entitlement and, and uh, victimhood and all that. No more than that. Because at the end of the day, we all in this together. We all have our unique abilities. We all have our unique uh, sort of uh, kung fu style, you know. I prefer uh, panda style. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, the task here, the karmic task that is ahead of us and why we're all here and why we're all here at these times that are so difficult, seemingly, is to resolve separation. Separation is the biggest illusion of your ego, the biggest distortion. And once you begin to see truth, you realize the innocence of your past, the inability to see that. And there's no need to judge yourself. There's no need to judge others for that. But now, you got to put it into action. And if you do, your life's going to be easy peasy. If you don't, 
there you're going to have a lot of struggle, a lot of resistance, a lot of drama. Okay, well, how does that translate to physical stuff? Okay, of course, you know, uh, this, uh, what I just talked about, it's not going to resolve any of your practical issues, you know, like say you have a physical condition or whatever, and that inhibits you or limits you. No, but you may be able to see the deeper meaning of this and, 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 you know, sort of what it asks you to do, where it forces you to go, you know, in order to resolve things. You know, every disease, every disorder has a metaphysical meaning. You know, there's, there's a, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, if you're not getting it, okay, throughout your life's experiences, at the very densest level of your existence, it's going to show it to you as a physical ailment or disorder. Now, some of us are born with, um, ailments or disorders and those are karmic things for the most part you know remember two weeks ago we talked talked about karmic scars a lot of people were interested in that. I got a lot of questions about that you know how it comes that we actually end up having scars sometimes at the exact same spots that our parents do and there is a karmic family uh, uh, aspect that uh, can be seen through that there's also a karmic family aspect in some of the uh, zodiacs that run in families uh, those of you who are interested in astrology is very very funny um, uh, to watch this in families okay so uh, there's a lot in exploring inner child and and karmic family things which is why we've dedicated a whole entire weekend here this weekend into the exploring these deeper aspects of that and the way we do this as most of you know um, we do this with energy work because in energy work you know we can transfer information um, to you without all the, the distractions and uh, projections we can have you have your own experiences and then afterwards we come together and talk about this and 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 learn how to how to label it learn you know the language of our energy so there's a sh huge power in in doing these energy work sessions with us because you actually get to have someone on the other end of it who can reflect and give you feedback yes that's right tiffany that's right the scars from the past live uh, and uh, carries the pain in those areas of hurt. That is correct. And sometimes in a physical way and sometimes just in an emotional or a mental way. Um, this is why we uh, recommend everyone to do karmic family work um, and learn how to clear those ties, uh, how to not sort of basically relive the lives of your parents and to, to having to deal with your parents' unresolved stuff for the rest of your life. And um, by combining it with inner child work, we, we can actually show you the connections and we can have you feel these connections, like how this is all linked within your energy and how to let go of that. And then, um, so this is Friday and Saturday, and then on Sunday, um, we have the free to self session. So, you know, if you, you have not uh, been able to manifest, um, you know, sort of financial abundance in your life, that you can actually invest in, in your own energy in that way, that you can pay for sessions, then come to the free sessions. I have two free sessions every month. And I treat you the same way as those who pay for the sessions in those other ones. The true self on Sunday, 9 a.m. is free for all of you. And here's a wonderful question Ron asks. What about karmic and contractual agreements we make coming into this lifetime? Are there really no innocent victims? Uh, you know, this is, uh, of course, a question that is uh, tricky to answer because the answer has to do with the level of consciousness that a person is at. Okay, I could say from, uh, you know, from a standpoint of uh, uh, seeing the larger context of things, uh, that uh, no, there are no victims. Okay, but um, having been a victim myself and, you know, still carrying victimhood in me and going there from time to time myself, you know, I know, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, subjectively, uh, that feels a little differently. Okay, I can go into victimhood uh, in a heartbeat, but uh, this has been a, a, a karmic family trait here in, in my family for generations. And I have been raised with all these guilt and shame and blame and 
you know, uh, 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 sort of uh, deflecting responsibility from my earliest childhood. So it took me a lot of um, personal journey and consciousness development to, to be able to see through this. So today I can see through this. And even though my ego wants to feel like a victim, all right, and it goes there, it can go there in a heartbeat. Why always me? Why, is, why am I always ending up doing, having to do all this and nobody's helping me and blah, 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 blah. That's my ego crying. <laughs> you know, and it's okay. I can love my ego for that too. But um, in the larger picture, Ron, um, you know, no matter what the agreements were that we came into this world with, they all serve one purpose, and that is uh, to create the best conditions for us to arrive at this place where we can see truth and where we can see through them and where we can transcend them. And so transcending our karmic ties, the agreements, the contracts, the vows, the oaths from past lives or other dimensions, you know, means uh, uh, that we are beginning to internalize them in a way that we can actually do something about it. And for some of us uh, who understand the deeper works uh, of, of energy work and energy coaching, it actually means that we can literally change the past. We cannot really change, we cannot make things undone, uh, you know, as far as like our memories and so forth is concerned, but we can change the energetic attachments around it. For instance, victimhood. Victimhood is an energetic attachment around a certain trauma that we have, okay? The trauma itself may have uh, just been uh, sort of part of a, of a karmic course <clears throat> of circumstances, but my victimhood, that's my interpretation of it, that's my ego jumping in and, you know, energizing the whole thing with injustice, with, you know, like, oh, you know, I have no uh, responsibility for this, you know, this is somebody else's fault, you know, like, uh, and, and externalizing my, my, uh, uh, my energy, so to speak, externalizing my power. And what most people don't understand is that victimhood is uh, one of the trickiest ego mechanisms keeping you in your delusion because every time you victimize yourself um, and uh, you blame others, you are externalizing your power, your power to change it, your power to make better choices, your power to change your conditions. And this is what a karmic aspect is. It shows it to you over and over and over again till you get it. Last week was a good example. Till you get it. And what do you do when you get it? You're like, oh shit, I can see this pattern now. Oh shit, I have been externalizing my powers to what? The system, the government, the my parents, uh, the, you know, you name it. My partner all the perpetrators in my life. When you see truth, you can see that and you begin to realize what sovereignty means and liberty and freedom. Those are not things that are given to you. Those are things that you have to reclaim. And how do you reclaim them? By becoming accountable for yourself. Yes. Pleasing other people, white shadow, trying to be good. And unfortunately, this is a very, you know, sort of shaky um, area here for all of us because we all, most of us, want to do good, you know. But the way we are approaching this is these old paradigms of you've got to be perfect, you've got to be right, you've got to, you know, you've got to do this in a certain way, you've got to be in a certain way. Most of these things are not true to us. So what I'm saying is, you are the most powerful when you're in your truth. And when you're in that powerful state, you do not need force. You do not need control. You do not need to blame others. You do not need to victimize yourself. In fact, you don't even need drama anymore altogether. And guess what happens? You don't attract it anymore. 
you don't attract all the suffering anymore. Not that it's like your own fault if you are, you know, suffering. I'm not saying that. That's not the point. The point is, is that you're not seeing the pattern in which you are in and how you actually energize it yourself. And that is what accountability means. Recognizing, acknowledging your part in it and stop playing the game. You may not have the solution yet. And this is where most of us are at. You know, we're beginning to see all these things, but we don't have a fix yet. We don't have a solution. Well, let go of the need to have a fix. You don't need a fix. When you're in truth, truth will display itself and it will come up with the best inner guidance that can put you into the right place and to the right time to say the right things. And and those of you who've been following this path of truth for a while, you know what I'm talking about. It, you know, it, it, it brings in all these synchronicities and serendipity and whatnot into your life. It brings in all these miracles in your life where you just go somewhere. I mean, this is happening to me every day. I go somewhere and pop, you know, I meet a person that I haven't talked to or whatever in 20 years. And, and all of a sudden they say something to me and this opens up a whole new world for me because there's something in there, you know, like as we call it in energy work, a download, you know, that opens up a new way of perceiving things and even maybe like a new idea, business idea or uh, something that, that is really important in this context of my life right now. Okay, there, so, somebody says that there, something seems to be stuck. I'm not sure. But, yeah, oh, oh, okay, you mean this in an energetic way? Yes, so <clears throat> really what happens is like all these things that I'm talking about are part of a higher vibratory understanding of our world and of our lives. And naturally, you know, when someone is, 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 is stuck in pain, is stuck in fear, and so forth, all that it sounds like a bunch of bull. All right, I get it. This is the incompatibility that we are all um, seeing with other people. This is like you talk about these spiritual concepts and they just look at you like you an idiot or you're crazy. Okay, uh, you got to understand that and you got to apply this now as part of seeing truth. Accept that not everybody understands this language. Pick everybody up where they're at. It's not important that you're right. It's just important that you can move into this place of collaboration with others because that's the prime directive. The prime directive is not to be right. The prime directive is not, I told you so. Oh, I've predicted this 20 years ago. No, the prime directive is collaboration here and now, being present, translating this into now, into like, what can I change right now? I know a lot of the stuff that I'm saying today doesn't really make any sense because it's not organized. But that's a problem when you talk about uh, uh, non-local holographic information. You're not talking about a, a structured form. You talk. I'm talking about something that can only be felt, that can only be internalized. All right. And um, the, the words I, I'm saying uh, don't matter. Uh, those of you who understand their own energy system, they can feel the energy that I'm trying to get across. So if you get stuck in form, you know, if you got mad at me last week from having to carry my uh, uh, phone camera around because uh, the the lawn service here was chasing me around the house with the noise of the of the lawn mower, you know, then ask yourself. Is it really about form? Do I have to present this information in a certain way so that it fits into your understanding of what a metaphysical teacher is or what an energy coach is? No, I'm not talking to that part of you. I don't want to be seen as somebody, as something. I do this on purpose. I'm talking to your energy. Okay. So the energy report for this week, or better say the following week, week 43, is called Keep It Real. All right. Yes, David, 
there is an organization behind that, but one that's actually above my own pay grade. <laughs> so I allow myself to not prepare for these things and to go in with, you know, the the feeling for it. I had been talking to people here all week about these subjects. And some of you listening here, you were one of them. You know, and those of you who come to the energy sessions here, they can be the future people that I talk to who are contributing to these energy updates. I'm not an astrologer. I'm not a channeler. I'm not nothing. I'm an energy coach, and I'm seeing things the way they are. Okay, we have a few minutes here for questions. Yes, I was going to say, admitting to the truth of the law of karma sometimes is harder uh, for some than for others because our purpose could be bigger uh, than... And you've been able to see, you know, and to make uh, the change. It can, it can uh, revolutionize everything you see. I'm translating what you're writing. It's sometimes hard for me to read your guys' comments because, you know, I have to, like, still hold the energy here. Um, uh, and, and so I'm trying to contextualize it. Yes, it's really difficult sometimes to understand what karma really means. Most of us get stuck in our fear of punishment and we see it sort of as a punitive thing. Okay, karma is just the result of the choices in the past. And some of these choices in the past encompass uh, not necessarily just this lifetime, you know, also existences in other dimensions and so forth. It's very complex and I don't want to bore you with these things because that's what we do in our energy sessions. So if you want to know more, you know, then come to my sessions. You know, I have people commenting on things, you know, quite frankly, or criticizing things um, where I don't say anything because I realize like, okay, you know, these are people who want to be right or who want to be special, or whatever, that's all right. But if you really want to work the depth um, um, of your, your own energetic being, then you got to do the work. So keep it real and do the work. That's the prime directive here for next uh, week. All right. Thank you, as always, uh, for showing up. And I want to point out one more thing. Oh, my God, I almost forgot about it. We have a special event at Transcodes on Saturday. Um, a cryptocurrency special where we're going to be illuminating the aspects of um, it, digital currencies, decentralization, blockchain, blah, blah, blah. Most of you have heard those words. But what does that actually mean for us here in context with self-mastery? And why do I promote it? Now, I have been, I admit, a little bit incongruent. I'm very excited about um, these technologies and these, these, some of these companies that are coming forward. And again, it's not just about Bitcoin, but there's still Wild West. We don't have the technology right now uh, for me to say, hey, go do this. OK, it's still Wild West. So you got to know what you're doing. OK, and there are people that come to me and ask me and I send them, you know, to experts or I send them uh, to uh, Udemy courses or whatever to educate themselves. OK, I can help you out. But. This is much bigger than you guys think. And six months from now, we're going to laugh about those little technical difficulties that are there right now. Okay, so on Saturday, we're going to have a two-hour webinar event here with uh, Sebastian Hoot, uh, our cryptocurrency specialist, illuminating um, uh, what, uh, how spirituality and digital currencies, how they can go together and how this can also be a huge opportunity for for us here, for those guys of us who've been fringe dwellers and uh, sort of um, trying to make living uh, in a new way. It, uh, it's Saturday, 9 a.m. Uh, Denver time, uh, which is uh, 11 a.m. New York time. Uh, if you live in Europe, if you live in Middle Europe, um, um, it would be 11 plus 8, 7 p.m. your time. Saturday. So go to www.transcodes.com, uh, my website, uh, to get all the info. It's free for all self-healing members. Um, so you guys don't have to worry. You get the, the access codes and everything from me today. 
Okay, there's uh, we have a little bit of time here for questions. Uh, uh, why when I go into public places I feel lost, I don't know what to do and I usually uh, uh, go a lot through this and, and then um, you feel frustrated about this. Okay, thank you um, for reminding me uh, of uh, one of the things that we are also going to be faced with next week and that is uh, uh, going into the expression part of things, okay? Um, this is because you have never trained to fully express your truth, to fully express who you are. And your system is confused with um, the belief of how you think you have to be and overwhelmed with all the energies that you're perceiving as an empath, as an energetically sensitive person, and not knowing how to get all this together and how to express this right. That's why. So what we need to learn is how to deal with our energies and how to translate them correctly. How to bring them into expression. And this is something that is like learning a new language. I talked a lot about this last week. So go back uh, uh, on the, when you go into the Transcode site to the blog and read the articles from the last week because they were all about, you know, learning how to express it right. But th this coming week, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, forced to go into our truth. So here's a practical tip for you. When you have this issue, and a lot of us have that in, in, in crowds, we avoid crowds because it's, it's terrible, it makes us sick. Literally, it makes me throw up, okay? First of all, you gotta learn how to consolidate your energy. And uh, for most of you, that means you're probably gonna have to learn how to ground yourself and how to center yourself first. And that can only be learned through experiencing. You cannot read this up, okay? And experiencing, it, it comes through like say meditation or energy sessions because there you can actually learn to make that connection between your energy body and what you want to do so that this expression meaning your ability to direct your energies be, gets practice and so you can uh, really bring this uh, into the into your uh, physical reality in other words there are ways to learn how to control your own energy so that first of all you're not affected by the outside so much but then, of course, in the next step, you're going to also have to analyze what in me has created all this uh, distortion, all these blocks. Why do I think I have to be in a certain way? Why do I have this incongruence in the first place? And I've said this many times in, in, in context with etheric protection. You guys are all crazy about learning these fancy etheric protection uh, uh, techniques. Yeah, I teach them. But guess what? You got to know your own shit first. If you don't know your own shit, you know, you know, you can't protect yourself because that's exactly where all the other stuff comes in. And when I say your own shit, what do I mean with this? I don't mean this in a degrading way. I mean this in the way exactly how I said it. You got to know where your own incongruences are, where you're bullshitting yourself. Because th these are your weak spots. So why do I feel like I can't say the right words? Why do I feel like I can't move? Why do I have all these like like th severe issues in crowds or uh, when when sort of cornered or put in, in you know under pressure? It's because I don't know myself enough. It's because I don't understand why my energy is going into places that I don't even want it to go into and why uh, uh, do I not understand it because I cannot see it there's a distortion here there's a distortion between my ability to understand and my ability to feel that's exactly what we went through last week it's the the block between our third and our fourth chakra as I explained it and this week we're going to be dealing with the effects of the block between our third and fourth chakra with a fifth chakra, which is, uh, you know, the energy center in our system uh, that regulates our ability to express. Hope this made sense. All right. 
Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Hey, before I go, give me one of those. Let's go on a like rally, okay? I, I want to see all your hearts and all your likes here before I let you go, because it's not going to be on the recording, but I can see this. So push the like button just right now, just for me, okay? Energy exchange. Come on. Yes, yes, there you go. Awesome. Okay, love it. Um, keep, oh, thank you. Keep asking questions, guys. I'm going to an answer all you guys' comments and questions here in the commentary, whether this is at fa Oh, gosh, awesome. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, whether it's in YouTube or Facebook. Thank you, guys. This is awesome. You know, this is really cool. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and see the opportunity in this, okay? Come to the free to self session if you don't have any money. Other than that, come to our uh, inner child and karmic family work uh, here this week because it's awesome. Bye, guys.